Hello everyone, welcome to YouTube channel Unfold with Dr. Atar Parveen and today we are going to start our first biology class with the chapter Plant Kingdom. So this is the portion for HSTR examination and uh, this is the portion for Christ's examination. If you look closely, the portion for both the examinations is the same but in Christ's examination you have to be careful when you answer because there is a negative marking. For each wrong answer, there will be minus marking. Same goes for NVS PGT examination also. For every wrong answer, there will be a negative marking. And this lecture will be useful for all the high school teacher recruitment examinations. And today from this portion, we are going to start from the chapter Plant Kingdom. Let's begin with our first class, the Plant Kingdom. Plant Kingdom is a very lengthy chapter. So I have divided it into six parts. And today we will begin with our first part, which is small and simple. But a question has been asked from this part in the previous year questions. So we will look into the previous year questions also. So now let's begin with the first part. A scientist named R. H. Whittaker, he gave five kingdom classification to classify various living organisms. These kingdoms were Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae and Kingdom Animalia. And today, we are going to study about the kingdom plantae. In earlier days, fungi, protists, monerans, these were all added in the plant kingdom because these three had a cell wall. But as more and more research was conducted, these three were removed from the plant kingdom. The same goes for the cyanobacteria which is known as the blue-green algae, which was also placed in the plant kingdom under algae because it had a cell wall. But later on, it was removed from the kingdom plantae and added in kingdom monera. The plant kingdom can be divided into five groups. They are algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. There are so many plants around us and to understand them clearly, we needed a classification system. So many great scientists gave different systems of classification. Let's take a look at them. So the first system of classification we have is the artificial system of classification. This artificial system of classification was given by scientist named Carolus Linnaeus. When we classify something, we classify it on the basis of a set of characteristics. So in this classification system, this is based on gross superficial morphological characters. A very mouthful and a heavy word, right? Let me break it down for you. It literally means characters that you can observe with your naked eyes. Like color, number, shape of leaves, types of flowers, etc. But this classification had its own drawbacks. This classification system gave equal importance to vegetative and sexual characteristics. See, this is not possible because vegetative characteristics, they differ because of the changes in seasons. Because of the changes in the environments, the vegetative characters can also change. So you cannot give vegetative characters and sexual characteristics of a plant equal importance. Then the next drawback is that this was based on a very few limited characteristics. So because of this, what happened? Even though there were two plants which were belonging to the same group, but they did not look similar, were separated because of it. So because of this, they separated the closely related species also. 
so in this the most important thing to remember is the system of classification and the scientist who gave that classification system so these are very important you need to remember this somehow the next system of classification we have is natural system of classification so this system of classification was given by scientists named george bentham and joseph dalton hooker this system was based on the natural affinities of organisms so natural affinities means natural similarities between the organisms so what was good about this system of classification is that it was not only based on external characteristics external means like in the previous system of classification we said gross superficial morphological characters right it means external characters but this system of classification was not only based on external characters but also on the internal features like we have anatomy anatomy means study of structure embryology means study of the embryos and the development of those embryos is embryology then we have phytochemistry so phytochemistry means chemistry of the plants what are the processes that are occurring in the plants then what are the products that are being formed after those processes then study of all those processes is known as phytochemistry and then lastly we have ultra structure so ultra structure means that minute characters that you can only observe with the help of an electron microscope see there are only limited number of things that you can observe with naked eyes right so in order to study minute features you need a microscope or if it is even tinier you will need strong microscopes like electron microscopes so now that we are talking about electron microscopes i have a question for you this gk question can also be asked in the hstr or crise examination do you know who invented the electron microscope don't forget to answer this question in the comment section below i'll definitely check your answers so moving on to our next classification system we have phylogenetic system of classification this system of classification was given by scientists named adolf engler and karl prandtl you'll have to remember the system of classification and the name of the scientists this can be asked it's very important then phylogenetic means relating to evolutionary development it is based on the evolutionary relationships among various organisms so evolutionary relationships means sir uh, the organisms that look like today they did not look the same way in the olden days like we ourselves we are human beings right we are homo sapiens we are the descendants of the monkeys that's what we say right so the homo sapiens that is the human beings and the monkeys we share an evolutionary relationship so it is based on that term. so what this classification system states is that the organisms which belong to the same taxa have a common ancestors so we have this grouping of hierarchy right we have kingdom which is the largest group after the kingdom below that we have phylum or division below that we have class below order then family then genus then species so the ones the organisms which belong to those individual groups individual class individual order individual family they will have a common ancestor it seems so this is what this classification system states so that's about phylogenetic system of classification so next we have is numerical taxonomy so what happens in numerical taxonomy is that uh, we will take some observable characteristics then what we do next we will take some codes and numbers and we'll assign them to these observable characteristics okay and then this data is processed in the computers so it is a computer based taxonomy okay so because of this what are the advantages is that it gives equal importance to all characters like you give equal importance to sexual characters also vegetative characters also and then again if you want to compare many characters all together you can run the data 
so you can compare many characters at the same time so that is time saver also numerical taxonomy the next we have so cytotaxonomy means so we have a cell for example that cell will have its own unique chromosomal number it will have its own structure then it will show some different behavior such information we take that information is known as cytological information and on the basis of that we classify them that is cytotaxonomy then next we have is chemotaxonomy from the term chemotaxonomy itself you can think that it involves chemicals okay so this is based on the chemical constituents of the plants what all types of chemical constituents chemicals are present in the plants on the basis of that we classify them so these uh, cytotaxonomy chemotaxonomy and the numerical taxonomy these are very important when we have no supporting fossil evidence sometimes it is very difficult to assign a evolutionary relation because we don't have a supporting fossil fuel we don't have an evidence to say that this organism came from this fossil so when we don't have such fossils the numerical taxonomy cytotaxonomy and chemotaxonomy they play a very important role okay so now let's solve some multiple choice questions so the first question is artificial system of classification based on andriesium structure was given by option a is joseph hooker option b george bentham option c carolus lennes and option d r h whitaker so what i suggest to you all is when you look at the complete question pause the video try to answer it on your own if you are not able to answer it then you play the video see the answer and remember it please try to memorize these mcqs because they are important one of them might be asked in the examinations maybe not directly but from some way to the other it might be asked in the examination so pause the video now and try to answer it by yourself so were you able to answer it if not it's all right let's learn together artificial system of classification based on andriesium structure was given by carolus linnaeus so the answer is carolus linnaeus carolus linnaeus was the scientist who gave artificial system of classification artificial system of classification is the very first system we did then next question is natural classification systems were based on evolutionary relationships only external features natural affinities among organisms superficial features <laughs> and the answer is natural affinities among organisms then the next question chemical constituents of the plants are used to resolve confusions by taxonomists these days it comes under so underline the term chemical constituents so what i suggest is whenever you read a question irrespective of its subject be it physics chemistry zoology botany whenever you see key terms you need to underline them like this so when you answer the question your focus you're focusing mainly on those key terms because if you miss out because if you don't underline you won't be able to focus so what happens is this ensures the efficiency with which you'll answer the question the next uh, yeah so the options are phylogenetic system cytotaxonomy karyotaxonomy chemotaxonomy so the answer is chemotaxonomy i bet all of you got this right this was easy isn't it the next question we have is the classification system which assumes that organisms belonging to the same taxa have a common ancestor so the options are 
natural system of classification, artificial system of classification, phylogenetic system, and system based on chromosomal numbers. So, pause it and try it. Did you try? The answer is phylogenetic system. The next question we have. The closely related species were separated. Okay. Closely related species were separated and placed in different groups by artificial classification systems because. Then we have options. Only sexual characters were considered in these systems. These systems were based on a few characteristics. These systems were based on the natural affinities among the organisms. Those organisms have no evolutionary relationships among the organisms. So he said artificial classification system. So in artificial classification system, we discussed that they were based on only limited characters. So limited characters means few characters, right? So the answer will be B. Option B. The next question. Cytotaxonomy is based on the dash like chromosome number, structure and behavior. So cytotaxonomy is talking about options we have evolutionary relationships, cytological information, natural affinities and gross superficial characters. The cytotaxonomy means we are talking about the cell here. So, if we are talking about the cell, the only term related to cell here is cytological information. So, the answer is cytological information here. Please try to answer it by yourself. And if you are not able to answer it by yourself, no problem. You can learn the answers. Okay. The next question. This next question was actually a previous year question asked in the year 2015. It is a very easy question if you look at it. Natural system of classification was given by, I told you system of classifications and the name of the scientists are important, right? So natural, try answering this without even seeing the options, okay? If not, then okay, we can look at the options also and we can answer. So what are the options here? Noll and Ruska, George Bentham and Hooker, Carolus Linnaeus and Engler and Prandtl. So natural system of classification is asking, right? So, this natural system of classification was given by George Bentham and Hooker. George Bentham and Joseph Dalton Hooker. Remember, I put pictures also. So, those are the scientists who gave the natural system of classification. So, that's it for today's lesson, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to comment down in the comment section below. And if you really like the video, please give a thumbs up, a like and also subscribe our channel. It helps us out a lot. And also, please don't forget to answer the GK question that I asked. Who invented the electron microscope? Don't forget to comment your answer in the comment section below. I'll definitely check. So, thank you everyone. Bye-bye. See you in the next lesson.